again, done my shit. Can you at least hear me? At least I have one viewer. That's not bad. But can you hear me? All viewers today get a free NFC ESP Hub kit. Lol, no. They, hope they come not free. But maybe, maybe we could just to the viewers today give a discount code. So in order to print my stuff and to meet the demands, I just got a new printer. And let's see how that works out. So the one, 
So since I'm printing multicolor, multicolor um, cases, I thought about getting a new box, a new printer, which can do multicolor. With the other printer I have, I had to change filaments. During the prints, I had to pause. And with this one, I don't need to. So let's see what's in the box. This is, these are the spool holders. We have the cable. This is nothing. I can hear just a bit louder. Okay. Is it better now? Can you hear me now? Very low. That's weird. What about now? Loud and clear? Mm, yes, better. Okay. So, unfortunately, restream. Okay. Un oh, yeah, yes, better. Okay, good. Um, so, what I was saying is um, since I've got more requests than I expected, I decided to get a new printer to help me work on this. And we'll see. So I, I, I found a printer which can have three filaments at once. This will help me to avoid printing, to changing spools during print, which I had to do, which I would have to, to, to do with the old printer. So what we have here is actually three Bowden tubes, and you have a print head with one, with one, so only one print head. Three Bowden tubes and um, the heater cartridge, three heater, three different heating cartridges. So each Bowden tube has its own heating spot. I'm not sure how this one works on that face, but we'll see after. So that's the printer, that's the the, the print gantry. We'll put that here on the side. We'll have uh, a mouse pad. Sorry, a mouse pad. That's one of the three extruders. So this device comes with three different extruders, but it's plastic, not metal. My uh, Ender 5 has actually metal extruders, but that should still keep up with the load I'm giving them. That's for the spools, that's the spool holders, that's um, USB cable, we have some filament to test and a bit of bone tube spatula here. A nice blue spatula. Zip ties for fixing everything. A USB cable for whatever reason that is. Uh, hold on, like this. We'll see that. We have three different filaments. Uh, we have gold. We have white. Oh, yeah, white. And we have black. We'll put them to the side. Two additional extra. And then we have the actual electronics. Is the stream quality okay since I'm streaming for my Wi Fi? That could be the reason. user guide. Okay, leveling paper, P 
please switch to the correct voltage or you get sparks and that should be here in the back okay 230 volts how does this work okay leveling paper switch voltage so GTA quick printer start guide so assembly there you go step one mount the gantry to the base Some screws, two print nozzles. Unfortunately, I don't have a proper guide on how to assemble the printer. Step one. Step one, assemble the gantry frame base from bottom to top with 4M5 
35 screws and far springs washers. Okay, machine installer screws. That's set screws. Wait, did I do something wrong with it? Screws that are too long, so I use the wrong ones to start with. I've lost some screws in the printer. So we're off to a good start already. These are the screws I actually need with the spring washers, which I didn't use at first. So that's what I'm going to do now. Well, it seems to be a very reasonably priced printer for being able to print three colors. We'll see once it starts printing. It, there is a new version with a touch screen, so the E30T costs around 500 euros on, in euros. I don't know in, in dollar what's in dollar. And um, that has a um, touch screen and some other functionality and this one doesn't actually, this one based on an older mainboard. I didn't actually I didn't actually notice that there was a new printer and a new version. Maybe I would have gotten that one instead. Nevertheless, here is my new printer and I hope this one is going to do the job what I bought it for. Okay, 
let's see if there's one for missing. It must be somewhere in here. I've lost the screw. That's quite annoying. Just one washer missing. I still wonder where these screws are from. Seems to be here. Okay, I just lost my Allen key in the printer. the Allen key. Yeah, there it is. So these screws come with these washers. The search of followers, primes and you Hey Frank, thanks for joining. So I hear you've got a printer. Yeah, I don't have a, a bot to... I don't have a bot to, to manage my spam. <gasps> Lydia! No, Lydia's stuff is gonna break. Well, you don't have a printer, but I know you ordered one. Someone told me you ordered a CR6 second edition. The one with the uh, sparks. Oh, there it is. I found my missing screw. Yeah, watch carefully. How you should not do it. But I must admit, I've got an under 5, and that was quite much more painful to build than this one. So that's actually already a good experience. Now to the extruders. We have one here. Where are my tools? So obviously this isn't the correct Allen key because why would you have one Allen key for everything? That's the Allen key. I just have to free up my laptop. There you go.
That's why I'm here. These are these are naked scapegoat. We already have Papa here to pay. And because of all the same, that's why I'm here. This is an escape code. Nice one. Good. Using Octopri. I'm using Octopri currently on my Ender 5 Pro and don't have another spare Pi to use on this one. So I'm going to have to wait a bit, but I'm going to order one to use Octoprint. since I don't want to be sitting next to the printers until they are done and uh, one printer will be in the in the cellar that should be actually an option to have Octoprint running so I'll probably have Octoprint soon. I will order uh, a Raspberry Pi soon in order to be able to print with Octoprint. What am I doing? Am I doing? Ah, there we go. So what's nice with these printers is they come with like T nuts. And when you start screwing them, they start to turn around and buy, bind in the V tracks, and that makes it quite easy to mount stuff on these V tracks. What I also like about this printer, printer which I don't have on my Ender 5, is actually the covers of the V tracks. They make it look much nicer, and you can print them yourself so if you'd like to in another color. It's up to you. Okay, this is installed, this is installed. What now? Just look at the instructions. Insert the tree Teflon tubes into the quick insert connector of the tree extruder respectively. It can be inserted into quick insert connectors of either as needed. So, there we go. On here, here we go. One here, and the other one just like this in there. I also just take good care for a good matter that all the Teflon tubes go until the end. We're gonna move this one a bit more to the left. Frank, I've learned so many 3D, 3D terms this weekend, like I know about printing skirts, now beds, filament, slicing, dicing, even how to blow things up. It sounds amazing. Atomic Papa, no house should be without one. Ian Trich, I find it better to know someone with one so I don't have to deal with the headaches. Yeah, but having one is more fun, actually. It depends. If you like to think on, th on things, it's, it's actually fun to have a printer. But it can also be a lot frustrating. Warm bath breath. I printed a new part for my brother's wheat wacker last week. My Ender 3 has been an excellent purchase. Glad to hear. Okay, what are those? Oh, end stops. Okay. Okay, no, this film, actually, that's a good thing. This printer comes with filament run out sensors. That's actually nice, and I I'm quite happy to have these. I've already had prints, like uh, six hour prints, or even, even 12 hour prints, just breaking off because of missing filament. So the printer continued printing, but there wasn't any filament. And that's when I 
uh, retrofitted a filament sensor on my Ender 5. And that was one of the best things I did because it, also, it already saved my prints two times. So having a filament run out sensor is actually a good thing. Okay, so we mounted this. Um, they tell you now. Step one, and now step two, plug the extruder cables into the socket of the extruder head adapter plate and the buckle must be fastened. So let's take the extruder cables here. So this cable has to go into here. Click. There we go. Uh, and the buckle must be fastened. Connect the motor wires E0, E1, and E2. So where is extruder 0? That's the good question. That's not explained anywhere. And they also tell you to mount the filament runout sensors, which should be here. Well, that was just like that. Okay. Extruder units, the back side of the top gantry filament holder kit was assembled with four M three nuts and washed a total of two sets were assembled. Okay, so now we have to add filament rod sensors. With another Allen key, since we don't have enough. So whenever someone asks you, asks you, why did you get a 3G printer, you now can answer, oh, well, I know a guy who just bought one out of curiosity, and now he, he managed to, to sell stuff with it. Just checking if I'm still alive. There we go. Still working. That's a good thing. So About the cases, where are we at currently? I've started printing some cases, like the first orders are being printed right now, and they should leave if everything goes right uh, mid, mid week, end of this week. Until then, I should have quite an idea how everything works with shipping, producing, building and everything so that hopefully by end of next week I will have more cases leaving the house. So we are currently talking about like just 20 pieces leaving the house by midweek. That's the first orders that I got. And then, well, I hope to be able to ship like around 50 orders a week. With two printers, I can produce up to 24 cases a day. But being realis realistic, I said I would be able to print 16 cases a day. It takes me two hours per case, one hour for the 
for the body and one hour for the lid. So that's what I have to take into account. I can print up to eight cases at once. Uh, I can print. So where are you shipping from? I'm shipping from Luxembourg. So from Europe, Luxembourg. And I can't wait to see their faces in the postal office. So that's another thing. I've been there, I've talked to them, I've warned them, I've been asking questions about delivery, fees, times and everything. They were always vague. So let's see how that turns out. <sighs> okay. So is this correct? I'm just wondering if I did everything right right now. But I think so. I hope so. And I did not. I did not. I did not mount it correctly. I'm not so bad actually, I just have to, to change the position of the mortars. They have to go like like this. That looks weird. Why wouldn't they provide any instructions? What uses have you found for the NFC tag reader? Well, my, my main use actually, and that's my favorite one, but I'm not sure if I'm going to extend that one. So I have like play cards with animals on it and, and um, yeah, images of Apple or anything on it. And my baby girl just loves to take the cards. And I've added like small NFC stickers on them. And whenever she puts the card on a reader, it will either start a song or either make a noise. So whenever she just scans the duck, the the like the the Google yeah the Google device will then start uh, making duck noises in the house. Or, or like play a song in the loudspeakers of the whole home system. But that's the thing I I quite like, and she seems to like it as well. So <laughs> that's my main use, and that's what I wanted to use. So when when my wife was pregnant, I saw the tweet from Paulus, and I just thought to myself, I want this for my girl, and I want it to be able to play with these cards. I never thought about selling these devices and yeah. So in March we, we just had a talk with Paulus and he asked me if I could just make it work since I had the parts laying around and I asked him if he managed to get it working home assistant and he didn't have an idea how to do it with ESP Home so I just took it as a challenge, started working on it, and well, now you see the result. I just created a beautiful case. And I think it's actually the the selling aspect is actually the case of it. So since it comes with a nice case, people quite like the the device. But like I said, I'm I'm selling the case, but I also put everything on, on, the, um, on GitHub since I want it to be 
like um, since I want it to be available for everyone. And since I'm based, since this is everything based, everything on open source, I think it should remain open source and share it. I, I've been thinking about just making everything private and then what's the use of it? Why should I make it private? People would come and just look at the code, take it over, look at the STLs, copy them and create their own cases. So I said, okay, let's make everything free for everyone. Since I'm working on an open source project and actually that was the best idea I ever had since um, having it open source and the repo free uh, we had like uh, more people participating and even making the experience even better now. So we are like we are a team of like five six people, and there's um, Magnus and also Jesse, and Jesse has been just cleaning up all my mess and my bad code. And he has been helping us a lot just to improve the whole device. And we are already, already at version 3. So that's what we are actually at. So how's the sound and how's the video? How's the image? How's the sound? Go. This is done. This is done. Connect everything. Uh, the extruder wires and the motor extruder wires are fixed into the small hole on the back side of the screen. I need to find a way to print all of art on cards. Well, what I did, um, Ian, was actually, um, if you saw the video on the blog post, I, what I did, it's, it's quite meh. I just used like I just printed on an inkjet printer on a paper and just glued it to a card. What you can also do is do it on a yeah, glue it on a card. There are printers that can print on cards, like inkjet printers, but you need inkjet printable cards. And um, you'll need a special tray, and not all the printers can do this. Um, hit me up on Twitter and I'll send you the link. There's like um, Maddox who created the initial project we got the idea from shared a list of printers who can do that. So that might actually help. Now, um, what's this? This is that's X. X is so where's X? Where is X? So that's, that's the Z. Z comes. Oh, here's Z. Okay. Here's the Z. Here is Z. From the bottom, and then here's the end stuff. And here should be x, x to the z. And the end stop is here. So having set up already a printer, I think this one is a lot, a lot more straightforward than the other five. Place the filament spool on holder. Insert the filament. So okay, now what they want me to? So there, apparently the printer is already assembled. That's the printer. Now, just gonna move it somewhere here. 
guess I need some like the trees paint me a play for my paper. I need to like paint print all of the colors. Um Ian, I already tried to print a tray for my printer since I could print on CDs and that didn't work. So so it depends apparently on the printer you actually have. So your printer has to be able to, to print actually on CDs, I think, or on cards. And only then you will be able to get a tray to print on these devices. So what I actually like is they have like everything covered up. gonna be in the way. I also have to thank Magnus who has been kicking my butts with my butt not to my butts, I only have one. Um, which, which like uh, trial and errors of the um, of the cases. So he has been my guinea 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 pig for the cases. And I've sent him the STLs, and he has been printing and testing and telling me what he didn't like. And that's what made it actually possible to have a nice case. So if you see Magnus, just thank him as he has done a just incredible job in being behind me, testing my devices, telling me what I did wrong, what I could perfect, where we could change something, removing useless stuff, then adding it back again on my demand. Okay, that's going to take a lot of time. I'm going to do that another day. So what I'm going to do is just... We're going to assemble the spool holders quite quickly. Where is my thing? So we have black. We're going to use their filament. We have black here. Going to break. This is black. We have white here.
and then the last one. That's gold. Gold. Gold, gold, gold here. Stickers. I don't have stickers. Ah, oh, you mean the stickers on this thing? Yes, they are quite a pain in the... Maybe I should add one screw per per holder. Much better. So I have to admit this is quite a fiddly thing to keep the, this in place. I could have done an easier job, but hey, they're providing three spool holders, so that's that. Could be worse. What? What, Frank? What's going on, Frank? Why, old man? Why did you get a printer in, in first place? 
the first place, Frank, what made you get a printer in the end? I still don't know if I'm going to like it or maybe hate it. It's going to be a love-hate relationship, Frank. You're going to hate it because it's not going to work as you want it to work. But you're going to love it the, the moment you get your first print and it's almost perfect and you get your first Benchy in your hand and you're like, oh, I made this with my hands and the printer. So that's actually nice. I'm still wondering why I have so many screws left. So. Assembly granted frame from the bottom with the three M35 screws and four. Assemble the fixed sets of extra units to back side of the top here. So there. And 316 screws here and that's washers in total of three sets were assembled. Yes. Teflon tubes, yes. Plug the yes. Connect the motor wires, yes. Then the extruder wires and the motor extruder wires done. Just connect the wires of X axis motor and stop. Connect the wires of Y axis. Z axis motor run stop, place the filament spool on the holder, insert the filament into the feed port until it reaches the end of the printing head. Insert the TF card into the slot SD card and TF card cannot be used at the okay, SD card. And so this one actually comes with a with a TF card, whatever that is, and an SD card reader. So that's actually nice. So the other five has like only these the other five only has like these small cards, they're like SD cards, but that's the micro SD and wait, the ninja made you do it. The wife pushed it. So wait, 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 wait. You were telling me you didn't want to get the printer because your wife would kill you and now in the end your wife told you to get a printer that's funny so it seems that we are ready to print that would be actually nice I will need to get a power cord. Let me clean up the desk. Two replacement bone tubes. An old screw tube. Clean up all the mess. So, no, no, some of these screws, the small ones are for the spool holders, that's actually a good thing, since I didn't want to have you sit there and look at me building this together, but on the other hand, I'm wondering why I'm having so many of the big screws left, that's a thing I don't understand, since everything came pre-built, and I only had to use four screws to mount the gun tree to the bottom part. That's what I'm still trying to figure out. Well, we'll see. I'll just switch it on and we'll see. So, let me check the camera if you can still see everything. These other spools, they can come in. Hold on.
So here I am back again with How Does That Work? For something like. Yay, he's back! So. <laughs> it's fine, so many screws left over. Surely that can be fine. It's fine, Frank, screw it. Well, if something turns out to be loose, you at least have screws to fix it. That's true. So, I just went and got one of these little cases. And I still think they look quite nice. So that's why actually I got this printer, to be able to print the marble one and the black one at once. Right now what I had to do is start printing two layers, pause the printer, change the filament, and then continue printing. And that would need me to be standing by to the printer, which you should actually always do, but yeah, who wants to stand there and watch his printer go like for four hours? Okay, just now step to insert the TF card into the SD slot. So where was the card? Here is this card. First insert the card. Here on the side. What was it? This. There we go. There's a card in there. And then plug the power cord and turn on the power switch. So now we'll know if I did something wrong or not. Cross your fingers. Please do so. Ah, there it is. It's alive. Printer ready. Good. So now, let's add some Filaments. We have gold here. I'll put that here in the back. Well, what I'm missing with this printer, which I had with the uh, Ender Tree were actually clip like scissors to cut the filament if it's a bit bent or broken. That's something I can't do with this one and that's quite annoying already. So for this printer inserting filament can be quite tedious. That's that's annoying. Oh, and I just tangled. Oh, well, not maybe not. There we go. So, I just found out that one of the motors extruder modules wasn't mounted correctly, so we're just gonna check that. This work. So 
Okay, first one going in. There. I think we've done this one. So what's going on here? How should we go? Just what's the matter? There we go. Here we have gold. Just going to the extruder. There we go. Um, I still haven't found out how this works. Is it just glued? So it's actually just glued to the print bed. This is the thing I might change sooner or later, I think. Where's the cutter? Where is my last ring? Recommended first layer of print height dot three millimeters. Okay, it isn't one of my best jobs, but it's okay. I'll take it. So what I wonder now is how does bedlam oh there's the bedlam screws. Okay, here are four screws for bed leveling. That's a thing I'm going to have to do now. So that's the next step. It looks like PLA and TPU with this new printer. That's a good question. I haven't looked into it, so I think I could. But it's more like co for color mixing. I'm not sure that's the main goal. Well, what, what, well, I got it for color mixing. That's why I got it. But it could also work. But I think for printing TPU and like uh, PLA, you might better have like a dual extruder printer, like like uh, like two heads, like two print heads with two different temperatures. There we go. This has been done. Now comes the leveling part. Okay, Frank. Leveling the printer. So prepare.
way too low here. Let's uh, I still have some room. There we go. It's a good one. So can you mix that? Okay, leveling the printer. I'm not planning on doing that yet. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, your printer does it by itself. That's a good thing. I'm just planning on printing big piles of plastic spaghetti. No, Atomic Papa. His printer will have automatic flat leveling. So the CR6SE has automatic. Oh, this one actually has a level corners function, which I didn't see before, so that's actually practical. This helps me to level the four corners, which I did manually now, would be automatic with the level corners function. What I wanted to check is the center. That's actually an issue, you see, the, the corners are level, but now, so the, the corners are actually level, but my center is just loose, so what should I do now? Is there a center? No, there is nothing to set up the center, so I will, I will ask them what I could do with that. I will hit them up with this issue actually. I will um, write GTech on YouTube and ask them, on YouTube, on Twitter, and ask them what's up with this pad since I can clearly just move this around here. And here it's just finally. Which it actually, which it should actually do. So that's quite annoying. Okay. Just let me put on some cable cars. Oh, look. Who thinks he's a pro now? Glass band. Ah, oh, well, glass doesn't bend, right? I honestly don't know pros and cons. Well, depends on the glass bed. Glass bed doesn't bend, but could be, could have, could be hollow on one side, like out of factory, could have a vent. And couldn't, and it could be that it isn't perfectly flat. Take that into account. Even, even glass can be can have imperfections. Even glass, uh, get a glass bed that will help them. With. I will get a glass bed for this one as well. So I have like a glass bed for the, for the proofs, uh, for the ender, and I'm going to get a glass bed for this one. 
I am not sure. So on the um, under five, I changed the the the, cool, the, part, the the hot end fan. I'm not sure I'm going to change it here since the hot end is quite beefier. So I'm not sure if the fan I am going to, I wanted to mount is going to be cool enough. But it's quite noisy, so I'm I'm glad it's sitting here and not in my office. Um, last step, adjust the button screws and slide in a paper room when it has a description level of printer. Oh, it's okay. Print, rotate the knob to print from SD, press the knob to actually model this interface. So you have a mixer option, that's quite nice. So it's going to print like. I can choose what colors I wanted to use the most. And I'm going for white. Okay, that's quite annoying. Also comes with a software. That's a good thing. So now it's heating up the bed, and then it's going to heat up the hot end, and then it's just going to start printing. So actually, that's it. Printer is running and printer is working. What I could look is, and I'm not sure how this is going to work, GTEC. Probably a software and download files A20T. Oh, they even have a Cura profile. That's nice. A20T Cura configuration file download. Open. So, which means I could actually just connect the maybe the PC to the printer. That would be nice. So, while we are waiting for the printer to do its thing, I'm going to move it here. I was going to show you. Some of the stuff I've been printing. Hold on. So here are the black cases, that's still, that's the first batch, and so that's the first batch of the black cases, there is the camera. You can see quite a lot because you cannot, there you go. And they look, they look quite okay. I'm still not happy with the results. Because in the end, I have to send it to people and they will have to like the product. So, I think my filament was too old and too wet 
and I'm getting a new filament on Wednesday, so I will be starting the black batch of cases. I have quite a few on order for these. And then we have like... So here are... That's noisy. So here we have like the pre-cut wires. I will be soldering. They are pre-cut and already cleaned. So it's currently printing nothing. Oh, 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 it just started. So let's hope this is working. So here are the pre-cut wires. And then I have like some of the, these cases here where I just um, prepare the, the orders I get and then start splitting everything, like putting the cases together before assembling them, just to be sure I have all the parts and all. This is one of the cases, that's the start. first one I started with and I will get a few more since I really have to get going with this. And here are the, like the, all the parts. The, the spare parts like the, what do we have here? The PN 532s and the ESPs and like ship. like all the parts that I'm going to ship with the ESPs and the PN 522s. We have like some covers. I just there we go some covers. There's one. This one is actually interesting. I printed it on a glass bed and it's glossy. But that's not what I'm going to do since I don't really like the, the finish on the glass bed. So I'm not going to deliver glossy, I'm just going to deliver matte, like print but finish. Here are some prints that didn't go according to plan. Yeah, plan. There you go. And they have like quite some artifacts in the printer. And we have some colors here. So here's the scan here. A marble. This is this. We have like the buzzers, and we have some of these. And the matches. That's actually all I have for these cases, I think. Well, that's it. And now we. So let's see, just mid print change colors. So now we're going to add like, yeah. So I've added a bit more gold uh, and less white and black. So before we were at 50 50, so now he should be pulling gold.
I must admit, it's quite quick on printing. Uh, it doesn't show at what percentage we currently are. But this printer seems to be quite, quite quick, so it's a lot more quicker than the Ender 5. I hope the quality will reflect the speed. So we at least have like, a, if we have speed like these, we should also have a decent quality. So that's what I hope now. Okay, so what's going to happen now is I'm going offline and I'm going to let the printer do its work and I'm going to share the print once it's done. So, have a good one. Hope you, um, hope you enjoyed the show and I hope I get around streaming more often and in a better quality. This was just like, uh, just quickly take a camera and start printing something to to have you be part of the of the whole case building process. And now I should keep, get back to soldering stuff together. So have fun and have a good night and choo choo. Thanks for the stream. Make do it more often. Look who's talking. So. Doing more often. Frank, you haven't been streaming for a long, long time, mate. So since I've been since I've streamed my unboxing video and my and my my printing video, my first frustration, everything, I think you should do the same. It isn't printing gold for now, even though I I just and it gold, so maybe I should. There you go. Oh, gradient. We'll see, maybe. Well, you should stream it. There's a lot of people who can help you with your printer if you're frustrated and stuck. So anyways, choo-choo, like Frank would say. Thanks for joining. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.